Spring training is that wonderful time of the year where major league and minor league players prepare for the upcoming season in Florida's Grapefruit League or Arizona's Cactus League. On the surface, it's just a bunch of exhibition games and practices that serve as a preseason for MLB. But the atmosphere and history of spring training makes for a unique baseball experience for fans between mid-February and the end of March each year. So let's talk about that. My name is Bobby, and this is Baseball Explained. As with most of my Baseball Explained videos, we'll begin with a little history. That history really begins in 1886. Baseball teams were mainly based in the Northeast US where the cold winter weather made it difficult to prepare for the regular season. While some teams practiced indoors, Chicago White Stockings president Albert Spaulding decided his team was going to train in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And in case you're wondering, yes, Albert Spaulding is the same as this Spaulding. And yes, the Chicago White Stockings were the original name for the Chicago Cubs, obviously. The White Stockings would win the NL pennant that year so other teams began heading to the resort town to enjoy the weather in springs while getting in shape for the season. Perhaps the most notable spring training event to take place in Hot Springs was in 1918 when Red Sox pitcher Babe Ruth filled in at first base during a game on St. Patrick's Day. He hit two home runs in the game, including a 573-foot blast that convinced the Red Sox to play Ruth in the field on the days he didn't pitch. As the 1920s rolled around, teams were leaving hot springs in search of new facilities and warmer weather for spring training. And that brings us to Florida. While teams had trained in Florida in previous years, 1913 is where we'll begin our story of the Grapefruit League. The Cubs decided to train in Tampa that year as the mayor of the city offered to pay for some of the players' expenses. Other teams would call Florida their spring home in the next few years, including the Brooklyn Dodgers, also known as the Brooklyn Robins at the time. As part of a promotional stunt in 1915, the Dodgers had aviator Ruth Law drop a baseball from a plane and manager Wilbert Robinson would catch the ball 500 feet below. Law forgot the baseball though and instead dropped a grapefruit, which exploded upon impact with Robinson. He yelled in pain thinking that the fruit juice was his blood, but luckily Robinson was okay and helped give birth to the name of Florida's Spring Training League. I should note that there are varying accounts of this story online but this one seemed to be the most consistent. Arizona's Cactus League has roots dating back to 1947. As a minor league owner in 1945, Bill Vex saw racial intolerance while in Florida during spring training. When he became owner of the Cleveland Indians two years later, he opted to have the team train around Phoenix, Arizona, as the area was seen as more racially tolerant. This was important because Vex planned on having Larry Doby become the first African-American player in the American League that year. The New York Giants joined the Indians in Arizona, and other teams would soon follow. Now, if you thought the story behind the name of the Grapefruit League was wild, wait till you hear the story for the Cactus League. As the story goes, a plant known as the cactus is native to Arizona. So after that riveting tale, let's look at how spring training is organized today. There are 15 teams in both the Grapefruit League and Cactus League, and for the most part, teams from the eastern part of the country go to Florida while those in the West go to Arizona. Teams in the Cactus League are all fairly close together, with everyone playing in the greater Phoenix area. The teams of the Grapefruit League are a bit more spread out, but everyone is still in Central Florida. So what exactly goes on in spring training? Well, in mid-February, pitchers and catchers report to their team's facility, while position players report shortly after. While there are, of course, practices and workouts for the players, the main thing that the fans care about is the numerous exhibition games. Young prospects get the chance to play with and against major league players, and any new players acquired via free agency or trade get to showcase their stuff to their new team as well as the fans. Most players don't play for an entire game during spring training, which allows them to sign autographs and interact with the fans in ways that they aren't able to during the regular season when the stakes are higher. Wins and losses don't matter during spring training. Teams are mainly concerned with getting their players back into baseball shape and seeing who has what it takes to play on the big league team. While most teams know who they want on their MLB roster for the season, spring training always sees a few position battles play out. Whether it be the final spot in the rotation, filling out the bullpen, or seeing who will play off the bench, basically every team has a spot to fill during spring training. As for the actual games, teams play whoever is in their geographical league, so no team from Florida is going to travel to Arizona for a game. 
Teams sometimes have intra-squad games, where players from the same team play against one another, split squad games, where the team splits in two to play two different games in one day, and they can even play against college teams. During years in which the World Baseball Classic is held, those national teams may also have exhibition games prior to the tournament starting. The last thing to mention is that organizations also have minor league training camps going on during spring training for all the players not invited to the major league camp. When spring training ends at the end of March, the minor league players get assigned to a minor league team, but some players don't get assigned to a full season team. For those assigned to a short season team whose season begins in June, they participate in extended spring training. This is basically just more workouts, practices, and exhibition games to keep these players sharp. Players rehabbing from injury may also be sent to extended spring training until they're ready to join their team. So with that, we've covered just about everything you need to know about spring training. Two leagues based in Florida and Arizona with deep histories, and more than a month of baseball to get the players back into the groove and get fans ready for another season. Out of Here Baseball recently passed 400 subscribers, so thank you for watching and supporting what I do. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button to help the channel grow and reach its next milestone. Leave a like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.